All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to put all the information into the data table for part two. Uh, we already talked about part one, where we were keeping the radius or the length of the string constant, and we changed the mass. Now we're going to be changing the radius and keeping the mass constant. So again, how we are doing this with the simulation, or if we're doing it in person, is identical. Uh, so we left off at the end of part one. We had 18 washers on here. I'll just keep that. That will be a total of 180 grams worth of mass because, again, each washer in this simulation was 10 grams of mass. I'm now going to change the radius of my string to be something pretty small. That works out pretty well. I'm not changing the moving mass still. And now I can take a look and say, okay, I've got about one, two, not quite 30 centimeters. So we'll say that's about 0.25 centimeters is my radius. So now we're gonna be able to go down here, we left off for part one, come down here for part two. Again, this is just trial one, trial two, trial three. The mass is remaining unchanged, so 0 0.025, and that's unchanged um, all throughout this entire lab. So I can put 0 0.025 all the way down through here. My centripetal force is going to remain constant as i said in this case i picked 18 washers but you can pick anything you like down here so 18 washers is 180 grams and if i do uh, convert 180 grams to kilograms that's 0.18 and i'm going to multiply that by 9.8 so my centripetal force for this entire lab is 1.764 so 1.764 and I could write that all the way down, 1.764, 1.764, all the way down through this entire column because I'm never gonna change that from having 18 washers. That's how many it's got, that's how many are staying on there. So now the radius is still the length of the string, which is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25 meters, because it was 25 centimeters. The circumference is still two pi r, so 2 times 3.14 times the radius, which is 0.25. And I get 1.57 meters for the circumference of the circle. And now we're going to get the period the exact same way. And we did in part 1, where I'm going to hit start, and I'm going to begin counting um, how many times this thing goes around. I might actually go to 30 on this one just because it's going to be moving pretty quick with such a tiny circle. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. See, I definitely <laughs> did not stop it over here um, where it started. Uh, but that's why we do 30 of these because it's not going to be a massive mistake. So we'll see how much close my centripetal forces are. Um, from Because remember, if this centripetal force, 1.764, is pretty close to this one, then I know I did okay. So my total time was 11.3 seconds. So to figure out how long it took to go around once, I take my total time, 11.3. I divide it by how many times I counted it going around, which was 30. And I get 0.3766666. So that's going to be 0 0.3, all right, so for velocity, that's circumference divided by time. So my circumference is 1.57 right here, divided by the time, which is 0.376. And I get a velocity of 4.175 or 1.8. And now I'm ready to do my centripetal force calculated. Again, that was m v squared over r, so m column times v squared divided by my r. So my m is 0 0.025 times v squared is 4.18, and that's going to get squared. And then I divide that by my radius, m because it's m v squared divided by r, which is 0.25. And when I do that, I get 1.747, so 1.75, which is pretty darn close to 1.76. So 1.75 and 1.76 are pretty darn close which is why even though I was obviously off a little bit in my stopping of this thing, 
it was moving really fast. I spread that, that little itty bitty mistake out over 30 total revolutions. So my numbers here for centripetal force and centripetal force calculated being really, really close to each other means that I did this pretty well. So that's why we do this for 30 revolutions, especially when it's going really fast like that. Because even though I obviously goofed, my data is pretty darn good because the centripetal force I know it was, was pretty close to the one that I calculated with the numbers that I measured. Uh, and that's how we do part two. Again, the mass is gonna stay the same. My centripetal force, because I get that from the washers and I'm not changing those, stays the same. So now for the radius, I would go back, I would reset. I click this guy a little bit and I'd have a brand new radius of about mm, 0.42, because it's um, 40, 40 something centimeters, so 0 0.42, 0 0.43, whatever you guesstimate that to be, because it's a smidge over this line. And I say, okay, 0 0.42. I'd recalculate my circumference, 2 pi r, find my time again, calculate my velocity, calculate my centripetal force, just like I did in trial one. So that's how we fill out our data table for the centripetal force lab. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.